Working? Okay, very good. Just leave this up here. Okay. Thank you, Father. All right. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Father Panayoti, Father John, Father Michael, and everybody here at this amazing parish in Marietta, Georgia. Thank you very much for your warm uh, southern hospitality and welcome. It's been a wonderful experience. I, thank you for also welcoming my husband, Father Costa Costandino, who came with me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. What is heaven? Many Christians speak about going to heaven. Orthodox Christians don't usually talk about going to heaven. We speak in terms of salvation, but really it's the same thing. Eternal life, paradise. So what is heaven? Is it a place? Is it a state of existence? If so, what kind of existence? What is salvation? That is the basic issue at stake in the controversy involving St. Gregory Palamas, whom the church remembers today. This controversy took place during the 1300s, and yet after all that time, we still remember St. Gregory Palamas on the second Sunday of Lent. Before I explain the controversy, I want to talk to you about the monastic lifestyle, monastic prayer, which was at the heart of this controversy. Orthodox monks practice a way of life that we call hesychasm, from the Greek word isichia, which means quiet or stillness. This was essential monasticism in the early church and remains the same today. <clears throat> The Catholic Church, by contrast, has many forms of spirituality and over 1,000 different kinds of brotherhoods or monastic orders. Each one of them follows the prayers, the lifestyle, the spirituality, the way of life of its particular founder, but not the Orthodox Church. As usual, we continue the beliefs and practices of the early church. There's one form of monasticism, and in the early church, and this is the same thing that we have today. Orthodox monastic spirituality is the same as the spirituality for all of us, for the entire church. The only difference is that the monks practice it more intensely. They devote their entire lives to it, and we practice this to a more limited degree. The prayers and the spiritual practices of the monks are the same things that we do today. But the monks live a quiet life of prayer, usually in some kind of seclusion away from the world. At the heart of Orthodox spirituality is a prayer that you probably know called the Jesus Prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, the sinner. Very often, this prayer is linked to breathing. People breathe in, and they might say a modified form of the prayer, Lord Jesus Christ, and as they exhale, they say, have mercy on me. The purpose of repeating this prayer again and again is to acquire unceasing prayer, and this is a biblical thing, from St. Paul's letter to the Thessalonians, where he said, pray without ceasing. So the monks attempt to do this, and they attempt to clear their mind of all thoughts and images and focus on the words of the prayer, first bringing it to their mind and eventually into their heart. And they link it together with the breathing. And this is how they attempt to do this. This breathing technique has been used for centuries. And they would typically sit down and put their head on their chest and concentrate on the prayer and their breathing. Eventually, the prayer begins to pray itself inside of you. And this is the beginning of unceasing prayer. Now, occasionally, after years of effort, some people, usually monks, might experience what is called the uncreated light. This is the same light in which the Lord appeared 
on Mount Tabor during the Transfiguration, something you're very familiar with since this church is dedicated to the Holy Transfiguration. So you have the icon there. You see the Lord ablaze in light. This light was so bright, so blinding, the disciples couldn't even look at him. This is the uncreated light, a direct experience of God. Now the controversy that involves St. Gregory Palamas involved the practice of the Jesus prayer and this breathing technique. It seems kind of abstract and very theoretical and maybe not very important, but the reason why we remember, we remember St. Gregory is because this controversy involves the heart of Orthodox spirituality and our very understanding of salvation itself. This is why we still remember him and commemorate him. So there was a man, his name was Barlam the Calabrian. Supposedly he was a Greek monk. He began to ridicule the Orthodox monks who were practicing this technique. And he said the monks were just contemplating their navels. And they didn't really see any light. This was just the result of auto-suggestion. Now he, Barlam, was trained in scholastic theology. That's the theology of the Latin West. And he denied this experience of the light. And he said that it was impossible for anyone to see an uncreated light because no one can have a direct experience of God. He said that this isn't possible because God is simple. He can't be divided into what we call the essence of God, God whom he, who he truly is, and the energies of God, that's the light. Does this really matter? As I said, it seems very theoretical, but yes it does, because it goes to the nature of God and our understanding of salvation in the Orthodox Church. So when Barlam attacked the Orthodox monks and this practice of the Jesus prayer, St. Gregory Palamas defended them and the Orthodox tradition. He was the Archbishop of Thessalonica at that time, but he had also been a monk on Mount Athos and he was very familiar with this technique. And he wrote a book called In Defense of the Holy Hesychus. He said that the monks did have a direct experience of God, not God's essence, which is something no one, none of us, could ever experience God as he truly is. But they did experience the energies of God, the, act, the actions of God, the activities of God. It's like the sun. We don't have a direct experience with the sun. We can never stand on the surface of the sun. And yet we experience the sun's light and the sun's rays. And those emanate directly from the sun. They are the sun. So this essence and energies distinction was not invented by St. Gregory. It had actually been discussed more than a thousand years before him, almost 2,000 years. It's been discussed within the church. And it was especially discussed by St. Basil the Great and St. Gregory the Theologian, whom we call the Cappadocian Fathers. They talked about the energies of God. So the Orthodox were preserving and conveying and practicing the ancient tradition of the church. But Barlam, the Calabrian, and the Latin theologians based their ideas about God on ideas that had been popularized about a hundred years before by Thomas Aquinas, okay? He and the Latin church based their opinions, their theology on philosophy, on reason, and they said that God cannot be divided. He is simple. He cannot be essence and energies. So this conflict reflects the basic reason why there is a difference between the Catholics and the Orthodox, which is the subject of my book that Father mentioned, was the subject of our retreat yesterday. What makes us Orthodox is that we base our opinions, our theology, our practices, our spirituality on the ancient tradition of the Orthodox Church. The, be, the early church, what the church has taught from the beginning, not on somebody's opinion, somebody's writing, somebody's philosophy, somebody's analytical theology or rationalism. That is the foundation of Catholic theology 
and that was the essence of the conflict between the Latin West and Gregory Palamas and the Orthodox. The online Catholic encyclopedia actually calls hesychism, and this is basically orthodox monasticism, a heresy. And this is what it says. Listen to this. Quote, many Greek fathers and theologians had maintained that knowledge of God can be obtained by purity of soul and prayer better than by study, unquote. And they actually seem surprised by this. That's right. The Greek fathers and the fathers of the church always said knowledge of God cannot come through study or through the operation of your mind. Direct knowledge or experience of God comes only through prayer and the purification of the soul. Even today, the emphasis in the West, both the Catholic and the Protestant churches, is on knowledge of God through study, through the operation of the mind, but we do not believe that. We can know things about God, but we can't have any real knowledge or experience of God simply by study. For this reason, the Orthodox have a famous saying, the true theologian is the one who prays. The one who prays is the true theologian. So. Does the essence and energies distinction matter? Let's go back to the initial question. What is salvation? What is heaven? Is it a place? No. For us, it is eternal union with God. Only we, the Orthodox, have this understanding. It, this is why the Orthodox emphasize the need for constant spiritual improvement or deification. This is why we talk about the image and likeness. This is why we talk about theosis, because God is holy. And if we wish to have life with God, who is holy, we have to become holy. Our goal is nothing less than this. This is salvation for us, theosis, full communion with God. But this is not the case for Catholics. They say they believe in theosis, but they actually teach what, we, what they call the beatific vision. This means that when they believe that when they get to heaven, they will see God. God remains at a distance. For them, salvation is being in the presence of God, but not for us. Salvation is union with God. They cannot teach this. They cannot believe this because they don't have that distinction between God's essence and energies. For them, it's impossible to have union with God. Now, we know that no human being can ever experience God directly in his essence, and yet the church testifies from 2,000 years of experience that people can become holy, can have an actual experience of the grace of God through his energies. And not only that, not just the saints, but all of us are capable of having a direct experience of God. And this is what we call deification. If Catholics are right that we only see God from a distance, then we don't have a relationship with God in the next life. Because this is what salvation is for us. If they, are true, if they are right that you can only see God, then there's no possibility of union with God. And this is what the church has always taught. So the Orthodox Church has always taught that our goal is union with God. This is the early and consistent teaching of the church. And this is what St. Gregory Palamas affirmed, defended, and explained in this famous controversy that took place 700 years ago. Orthodox spiritual practices and our teaching about salvation, life in union with God, the direct experience of God is what he was championing. This is the goal of our life, and this is the reason why we have all of the practices in the church, all of the sacraments of the church, why the church has a certain seasons for, for fasting, such as we're in right now, the period of Lent. So let's remember the example of St. Gregory. Let's remember 
what the church offers to us for the purpose of our personal sanctification so we can achieve this goal of union with God. May we attain this goal by the prayers of St. Gregory Palamas and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ together with his everlasting Father and the all-holy good and life-giving spirit now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you, Father.